Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Open Mic Podcast. My name is Caroline. I'm a rising senior at Columbia University, and I'm so excited to be hosting the series where we'll be talking about school and life and everything in between. Each episode will feature a new topic and a different guest, and today I'm so excited to be introducing Pranathi Srirangam. Pranathi, thank you so much for being here with me today. Hi, everyone. My name is Pranathi, and I'm a first year at Barnard College. I'm not entirely sure what I'm majoring in, but I am a member of the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month Club at Columbia. Yeah, so everyone, happy APOM. That's the acronym, I guess you could say, for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And today, the date that we're posting this is going to be early May, probably May 2nd. Um, And so that's the beginning of APOM. And so we wanted to start off this month with talking about APOM in general and also APOM at Columbia. And so Pranathi was kind enough to join us. She's a member of APOM at Columbia, which is a club that, do you guys, do you want to explain what APOM does? So APOM is an event planning club. And so during like the entire month, we host events relating to Asian culture in different ways. We have like an opening ceremony and a closing ceremony. The opening ceremony obviously kicks off the entire month and then the rest of the events follow. That's like what the standard structure would be to like account for the fact that the semester ends before May starts. Um, We had all of our events happen from like March throughout April this year. Yeah. And I remember the first time I heard about APOM was actually with respect to Columbia APOM, because one of my friends, Julia, who is the current co-president, I think, of APOM, she joined her first year and we lived in the same residence hall in Fernald. We were just talking about like what extracurriculars we wanted to be involved in. And I hadn't really heard of APOM, like even the month before college. So I think it's great that we do have a club that celebrates it. And because college usually ends in May. I think like final season is in May. So like Columbia APOM is during April. (laughs) So then I thought like APOM in general was in April, but it's actually in May. So just to, just to confirm that. And yeah, so Pranathi, this is your first year at Columbia, right? Were you on campus for the entire year? So I was at home for the fall and then I was on campus for the spring. Gotcha. How was the transition? It was actually really interesting. I think being at home, it felt very much like I hadn't left high school because I was just doing work and it was like at home and and that was like very similar to like what I was doing senior year and especially towards the end of senior year Um, because by the end of senior year, I was like still studying for like my various like end of year exams. And so just all of that stress like at that time felt very like repetitive in the fall. (laughs) Like looking back, it was nice to have someone take care of me in the way that we all like to be taken care of when we're at home. Um, But I think going to campus in the spring was like a very important lesson for me because it was just like I had to take care of myself for the first time. Um, I enjoy cooking. So I like went to like the 75 meal plan. So I was like doing a lot of cooking for myself. And I was just like learning how to take care of myself while also like studying and like you know the general like first year like everyone has to balance everything yeah um obviously it's different from like a normal first year but yeah yeah it is what it is yeah (laughs) but I'm glad you kind of enjoyed it you just moved back right because finals kind of just ended yes um it was like a week of finals right after classes ended and then we have our summer semester starting next week or like yeah may 3rd yeah really quick really quick my brain is like post finals because i actually had a lot of them concentrated at like at certain times so like two weeks ago um which is like earlier than like the normal start of finals week i probably had like four final submissions and then like a week and a half later i had another like four to be done um and so overall it like it clearly worked out i'm still here but um (laughs) But it definitely like the structure this semester with like changing classes and also intensive classes and then just the structure of finals did make it did make it really difficult, I think. Yeah, I think if you can overcome a COVID semester, then you can you'll thrive in the normal the normal circumstances. (laughs) That's what that's what the hope is. Yeah, yeah. How did you decide to join the extracurriculars or the clubs that you did? I joined everything I I did for the entire year um, in first semester and the reason I ended up choosing a palm or the reason I ended up choosing a cultural club is because um, at the beginning of the semester, I could immediately tell that like making friends wasn't going to be a process that necessarily played on my strengths as like in terms of friend making. And so I was like, OK, I should join a club that like has both has like a good vibe. I like if I meet eboard and I like find that I like them, and I like the vibe that they present. 
um, then I'll like know that at the very least I'll have like people to talk to and like Mm -hmm. people to hang out with. At the activities fair, they had like their little like Zoom meeting and I dropped in and then I saw like, oh, this like seems super chill and like they seem very nice and it doesn't seem, and I like want to get my, I want to play my hand at like event planning. I think it would be fun. And so I was like, okay, APOM definitely seems like one that's like for me. And then I was looking at the application and I thought the application was like, it was like very, it was also very chill. And I'm like definitely someone who believes that like applications to event planning clubs and to cultural clubs shouldn't have to be super difficult for people to access because the degree to which you embody your culture is obviously different based on your own experiences. I liked that APOM was very accessible. So yeah, that's why I joined. They were just, they were just super fun. It seemed very, it seemed really nice. I think that is a good point to make. I think cultural clubs, because there are different types of clubs in college, right? There's like your more academic focused, um, I guess you could say like business oriented, cultural clubs, like STEM activists oriented. So I think cultural clubs, a lot of the pl- the events that they, they host are very bonding focused, especially when we were in person, they would be like, I don't know, like maybe movie nights or like uh, night market type of events, which I think is just a good way for people to get to know each other. So I think once we're back on campus, I think you'll feel that even more. (laughs) So yeah, can you actually talk a little bit more about the application process for APOM? Like what what kinds of questions are asked or what types of materials are required? Um, It was like very chill. I think they said like, oh, um, it was like, oh, why, like, why are you thinking about joining? Or like, what would your purpose, like, what would you want the club to be for you? Um, Mm -hmm. And then it was also like, if you had to like plan your dream event, what would it be and who would it be with? And like, what would you talk about? And I think the third one was like, if there's like a TV show that would describe your life, like what would it be? (laughs) Or like, like one of those like cute fun ones. And then um, I said, reply 1988 which is like a (laughs) K-drama and then it was it was really funny because in my interview which was also very chill I was like nervous when I was like walking in because I was like I can't believe I'm interviewing for a cultural club but I just realized that that's what all of college is but when we were there it was like so chill everyone was like making jokes it was like very nice I don't remember which of my interviewers it was because there were three of them but they like they were like oh my god we saw your answer for apply 1988 and we were like we have to accept her she like she totally gets it and I was like I think Um, And so it was, like, very, I was very quick to, like, enjoy, like, talking to them. And, like, I'm happy I joined because of that, like, smaller, just, like, the nicer vibe. Yeah, that's awesome. I think my sister watched that K-drama, like, three times. I haven't watched it yet, which I feel like I need to because, like, everyone who watches it watches it, like, over and over again. So maybe I'll put that on my list for the summer. (laughs) It's definitely, like, a, it's definitely one that reminds you of just, like, the importance and like like the, how lovely relationships can be with other people whether it's like mm-hmm. like not even like focused on romantic but like friendship and just like 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 family relationships it's so good so so deep there's so there's so much that goes on in it I love it so much <laughs> it's definitely my favorite k-drama um mm-hmm. and that's saying something because you know like crash landing and everything else <laughs> That's funny. You're like a K drama connoisseur. <laughs> I I only started like during the first the second half of quarantine, but then oh. when I like started slacking off at the end of senior year, as one does, um, I was just <laughs> I was on the I was on the binge grind. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It's a good way to pass time, definitely. And um you mentioned also like event um pitching, I guess you could say, or brainstorming on the application. What mm-hmm. were some of the specific events that we had this year that were in general like that like APOM hosted Mm -hmm. um so our I'll talk about mine first because it was mine um but we had our like theme was mental health so we hosted a panel with Elodie Lee who's like um the founder of Inclusive Therapists and then we also got to hedge Coley, who is a mental health therapist in training, she's currently in grad school. She runs the Brown Girl Therapy account on Instagram, which um, definitely has a pretty wide reach. Our panel was three event chairs, uh, me, Sanjana, and Scarlett. All of us like brainstormed questions. And then I thought it went really nicely because they like really built off of each other and they had a really good back and forth. And so moderating it was like a very like low stress. Um, Like it was like very nice to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was my event. One of our first events was um, a writing workshop event. So thought provoking and it was really well structured. We also had a film event. The film is called the 
Deed of Death, and it was released in Malaysia. I'm not entirely sure which year. Like, they brought the director and one of the main actors. They, like, talked about just, like, the process of filming it, like, talked about, like, Southeast Asian representation in film and specifically, like, Malaysian representation in film. It was just such a wholesome, like, it was, like, such a good event. They were, like, so excited to be there. They had, they had, like, the cutest, um, they had the cutest setup. They, like, had their, like, film posters behind them. The translator was super, um, was super good. And it was just, it was just a very, like, good vibes event. Um, and I'm not someone who's, like, necessarily the most film focused, like, as a person. Um, but I just really enjoyed, um, I, I enjoyed it a lot. There was also a music event, um, which is, which was, like, a coffee house style event. There were different performers. There was also a skincare and beauty event where they brought two people within the industry. Um, one of them was from the Monoliths Collective, and then the other one was someone from Iwakiyash who is also Asian. And so they both talked about like what the beauty industry is like, like representation wise, and like why their products or like what they work towards fills niches that are currently unoccupied within the beauty industry. And so that was nice as well. We didn't end up having an opening ceremony, but we did have a closing ceremony. And so in closing ceremony, we invited Priya Krishna, who is a food writer um, for the New York Times. And she was previously, like most people would know her, I think, from Bon Appetit. Priya was like so lovely to talk to you. And it was like, and I thought it went really successfully. So yeah, those were the events that we hosted. That's awesome. And this is all student yeah. driven, right? Yeah. How, how does the, how is like, the logistical side managed like how do you find the speakers and how do you kind of like set up everything so we definitely had to start early like after we decided our theme for the year which was re-envision we were like pretty quick to like get into our groups like brainstorm speakers like we had deadlines we had like informal internal deadlines um about when we should have reached out when would it, like when it would be best to do like to do each stage of it in general reaching out to speakers was a process of people brainstorming them on their own i personally and really um i follow a lot of accounts that are on like the bipoc slash poc side of instagram and so i found melody by I like follow inclusive therapists on Instagram and so I like looked at them and I just found that I liked a lot of the stuff she was saying and also I made sure that all of the like all of the people that I was considering were like different like diverse in different ways Mm -hmm. um so Melody is an Asian woman is an Asian woman and she also um like she's also queer and like definitely brings a lot of that like thought into her practice and with Sahaj um she I just like all of her content like like felt like I felt attacked by all of her content um and so I was like I just like everything she says speaks to me like um I feel like again a lot of the stuff she was saying resonated very well and so I I was the one who pitched those two um there were others um everyone else pitched others as well but are these two were the ones who responded um as (laughs) as event planning goes Mm -hmm. um I think for a lot of other people it was a matter of like oh, we can, like, do our research to figure out, like, who exists and, like, who we'd want to reach out to. And then also, like, who would be likely to accept a, like, like, an event like this. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think in general, like, social media is definitely the way most people go about it, I think, Um, just because, especially in a pandemic sense, it's, like, hard to find people otherwise. But yeah. That's really awesome that you guys are like taking this on in addition to everything else that's happening in school. And I think it's before being on eboard and having to plan events for the clubs that I'm involved in, it's like, you don't really think about all of the work that goes into reaching out to speakers. And before that, planning out a list of people to reach out to, because maybe there's like a, like a 10% chance that they'll like, yeah. reply to you with a yes. So <laughs> Yeah, kudos to you guys. And you mentioned a lot about the events, about like the people. What do you think have been your favorite APOM traditions, if you guys have that, like in in your club? I think a lot of those kinds of traditions are ones that didn't get to happen this year. Ebor definitely like towards the end or like after all events, after all of our events happened, they were like, we really wish that like we could have done more fun things. A lot of our stuff is like like parties in person that have like, they do like karaoke nights sometimes. Um, And I think they really wanted to do like hot pot this year, but of course it wasn't possible. Um, And so I think like they were all very much like, it's 
we know that like event planning can be really difficult and we wish and we are like sorry that it wasn't necessarily as there wasn't as much fun as there normally is but we're like so proud of you and so thankful that like y'all stayed something that made like apom uniquely nice for me this semester or this year um was in first semester they organized this thing called coffee chats and so it would be one member of eboard or like one upperclassman would be matched every week with um one underclassman like one new member so like one new event chair and so i found that like in um in fall semester i wasn't i obviously wasn't like meeting that many people like my classes are my classes but there were like very few relationships outside of that that i was creating but like literally every single one of my coffee chats like we hit it off so well i still talk to all of them it was like so it was like so fun and so nice and i think having that like chance of like meeting eboard members like one on one for like the inti- like for like each week in a semester was like definitely something that was really valuable for me and something that I enjoyed a lot and I thought um like I'm pretty sure like I'm fairly sure most other clubs didn't do that and I mm-hmm. thought it made it like a like a uniquely nice experience to be able to like as the semester went on like the first like the first meeting um you know how like people like type in zoom chats like when um like other people are referenced in the club and like obviously like eboard is like generally friends with each other it's so, like they would be making jokes but then <laughs> I feel like as a result of our coffee chats like I was like starting to understand the jokes more and like we like and like and then all of the event chairs kind of like added in ourselves and so by the end of it there was definitely a bigger community that was created um that I definitely appreciate a lot yeah I think that's a really good point the one-on-one meetings especially now it's it's weird because it's I guess it's easier to meet one-on-one but then just like it's hard to meet people if there's no kind of like outreach like no, there's no initiative to do that. So I think it's really great that APOM did do the coffee chats. Yeah. I think it's cute too, the name coffee chats. Did you guys have coffee or was it just like a? <laughs> because a lot of us are in different time zones. Um, mm, oh, it was true. very like, it could, it could have been like 9 p.m. for me, but then 11 a.m. for them. And um, <laughs> it's what it was, but I, I, I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Like what you were saying about not being, like not normally taking the initiative I just definitely feel like without it, I wouldn't have been able to meet them in the capacity that I did. And mm-hmm. as I've gotten to know them better, I'm like even more like, like I definitely consider a lot of these, a lot of these people, some of my closer friends in college. And I definitely appreciate that that is the case. Community is a really big part of college in general. And I know definitely it's hard to build community over Zoom, but I'm wondering like, what types of communities have you seen at Columbia, like through your clubs or through your classes? And yeah, just in general. Um, so APOM is definitely the like main community that I have found that isn't based within like college classes and stuff. I do think that with cultural clubs specifically, it can be a little it can be a little difficult to navigate. And part of that is due to the fact that a lot of cultural clubs, when they're based around a certain identity, it will be inherently difficult for for minorities from within that group to be able to access that space. For example, like in a South Asian Student Association, you'll find that like just them in general, um, definitely across all colleges, you'll find that there are probably going to be like more North Indian students than South Indian ones. So unless a club really works on adding or like pitching themselves to people who don't necessarily identify with that label but are still obviously like within it like a south like a south indian person is obviously a south asian person um unless work is done to like specifically um do that it's like difficult to get that diversity which is obviously valuable in the way that in the way that all diversity is valuable um i think in the context of apom we are definitely are like my class or like the first years that are here right now are definitely um the ones that I de- like that fit within more minority backgrounds within like um within Asian experiences. But I think in general, APOM is pretty good about being accessible in that we'll definitely have we have a pretty good balance of like international versus non um versus like second generation. Asian students and I think even though my class was the um was one where we didn't necessarily see eboard reflect our identities we definitely still felt um accommodated for and I think like talking to Ling and Julia about it who are our co-presidents we like definitely had those conversations and I think a lot of us 
like all of us continued on to eboard for next year and so it's very exciting to be able to a lot of us are like recruitment chairs and social chairs um i'm personally opening ceremony chair um but having that like exposure and becoming the like and then adding that face to like what people will see when they like are thinking about joining the club is definitely something that's going to be super valuable um and i also think that like the diversity that we had this year in our events was like super cool in that for example with like the film event um with like the deed of death that we like would not have been able to get that um to get that event without um our like one of our event chairs being like malaysian and so like him being able to find that and so i think just like there's something so valuable but having those experiences or like having those like event chairs be able to create events that bring those experiences into the picture because mm-hmm. it was because it just adds so much. Um, another thing is like for our opening ceremony, um, I moderated with Priya and I definitely found that a lot of the stuff she was saying specifically resonated with my experiences as a like like second gen, um, second generation Indian woman living in America and specifically like um, just like where we both came from. She's uh, She's from Texas and like I'm from Massachusetts, but the idea of like being in a suburb where there's actually like a pretty... Um, there's like still an amount of diversity and like people that you identify with, but then also not enough to make you feel like you are like generally accepted. But in general, I think it's like very exciting to see that APOM is continuing to be more diverse and like we'll be doing that in the future as well. And so just celebrating that accessibility and that and the growth of that accessibility as it will continue to happen in the next few years. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that's a really valid point because there's no one type of Asian, right? And even if we do have representation in these different groups, there are still minority groups that are being underrepresented. So I think that that's a really good point. Thank you, Pranathi, for for sharing that. And how about outside of clubs? So um, are you leaning towards a poli-sci type of major? I have thought about every single major between like international relations to like computational biology. And um, the reason that it like, it it gets so varied is because I'm definitely interested in public health and the intersections between like medical, like racial medical disparities and Mm -hmm. how they come about. That's like a very interdisciplinary field to begin with. And so I took a data science class for the first time. Uh, It was like my first computer science class. Um, I took a data science class in the fall semester and I realized like I totally love it. Like I like really enjoy just the way that you can like take data and like understand like different trends with it and the way that like data visualization can be both like can be super powerful and like you can get really cool trends and stuff. Um, And so in my like in my head like the far goal is like computational public health where I would like use whatever skills I have in the direction of studying the different medical disparities that exist due to race especially in America and like also just like intervention strategies and like how like getting like the literal data to back up how to fix that the reason that it makes choosing my major so difficult is because there's so much that goes into it like the main like my main goal for like sophomore year by the end of by second semester because I have to declare by then is to figure out which discipline I want to like become an expert in such Mm -hmm. that I can like meaningfully contribute to that aspect of the project. So I'm considering like data science in that regard. In the summer, I'm like doing something at MGH's um, Mass General Hospital's like disparities research unit. And like my supervisor is like was an IR major, like an international relations major when she was in undergrad. So like you can really come from anywhere and end up at the same place. Obviously like options are liberating, but then it's also like there's also like a large responsibility that I feel to like have to choose the right thing that'll be like the most useful for me and then also like be the one that I'm most oriented towards so I'm still figuring it out but it's exciting great I think that's really cool and I think definitely like data science or any type of computer science plus public health or medicine I think that combination is really great and if you're able to like pursue a major that combines those I know at Barnard specifically there's the science and public policy concentration right or minor it's a minor yeah right and I took I took two classes these these were two intensive classes one with professor Brian Morton and then one with professor Amy Jo who are the co-directors of the program Mm -hmm. and they're the nicest people ever and their classes are really interesting because it's different from anything you take like if you were like just took 
like a strict STEM course or like a strict humanities course because they really combine it, mm-hmm. which I think is really cool. So maybe, I don't know if you're interested in pursuing that ma- that minor. In the minor, there's also this course called like the Social History of American Public Health with mm-hmm. Professor Kuro. Um And I like, I, I took it in the spring and it's definitely like one of, I, I had a lot of fun in it. And even though it was like, um, it was like a large lecture that had like discussion sections as as large courses are. Um, but I just felt like what we were learning about was like a really unique side of like mm-hmm. history or a really unique a really unique side of medicine that was like based in history and historical thinking that I had never like seen before. And so I was like, this is super cool. And I like definitely enjoy it. So I'm definitely also considering the minor, um, depending on what my main discipline or major becomes. Yeah, that's awesome. I was in that class, I think for the first week, but then because of credit, like limits and also just class conflicts, Mm -hmm. I couldn't take it. But I think I'm like really interested in taking that for next spring, which will be my last semester in college. So Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's always an 840 class. And so I have so many friends who are like, I would have taken the class, but it's 840. And like, it was just not possible. And it's very true. I, I was definitely guilty of like waking up at like 835, like like splashing water on my face and then like going to class because it was because it's because 8 40 is so early I definitely think um I definitely think I guess the one nice thing about being online like the one good thing is that you don't have to like become a real person in the morning to then go to class you can just kind of exist like you can like leave bed wash your face and then still go to class and still be able to like enjoy it and like be there as opposed to like having to like get ready like an hour or so earlier yeah it's good that you wash your face too sometimes <laughs> you just like just put your sometimes it is like <laughs> <laughs> just put the camera off or yeah. like at least just like maybe like use the zoom filter <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's funny what other classes have you taken that have been I would I don't know if you would say favorites because you've only been here for like one year so far but that you've enjoyed um I really did enjoy my data science class Mm-hmm. It was a spring, it was a fall B course. We had, we had class like four days a week, so it had to be. An intensive um, one? Yeah, it was an intensive course. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So my data science class in fall B was definitely one that very much like changed my like perspective. Because if you had known me like right after senior year or like pretty like right until like right before the beginning of college you would have been like oh she could never be a comp sci major she like like I would literally be like I hate it like never I will like like cancel like no (laughs) um but then I took the data science class because I was like at the very least like even if I'm not taking the intro computer programming in java course which is like 1004 which is like the normal like the usual class I still want to be able to take one because 1004 didn't like fit with my schedule um but I just realized like it's such like so it's so interesting and the entire process I think part of the reason why it was so interesting to me specifically is because the class used like real life data sets and like we used like we like learned things about like poverty like our final project um was to take a music database and then like find some trend within like the like danceability or um or like just like different like number like different like evaluations on of the music so like there was like one that like there was one about like tempo and then like energy and like danceability and um like the lyric like the lyricality or like there were like numbers that were associated to different songs in the database and then we had to like find trends within that and it was like really cool to like do that with like real life data um and I think that like it was it was like really good for me to do that. That being said, that course um, was definitely very intensive in the way that like meets four times a week plus two hour mm-hmm. labs, like two hour long labs. Like so it was like twice a week plus like homework and stuff. But I really would suggest it, especially when they um, eventually like broaden the curriculum back to like a full semester course. Wow. Um, but it's really That's, cool. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. How do you measure the danceability of um I'm not entirely sure it was just it was just stuff that came with the database um Mm -hmm. but it was like just it's just really cool to be able to take that kind of information and then like Mm -hmm. come up with something about it or like run statistical tests about it um another course that I really liked um obviously I really liked public health with Professor Colgrove um but I definitely enjoyed um I'm I took third year conversation with Professor Marie a French conversation class yeah yeah and I just like 
loved her. She's so sweet. It's like a very like, um, it was only 14, 15 students in the class. And mm -hmm. so I think of all the classes that like translate the best to Zoom, I think conversation classes actually do pretty well because the idea of like turn and talk to your neighbor is like mm -hmm. acceptable in a breakout room format. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way she structured the course was like, there were like three total presentations that you would make in the entire semester. There'd be like one like thematic one about something that you really care about. And then there was one that would be like, oh, here's like, like tell us about something you enjoy. And then there was, and then it's like, tell us about something news related because it's so open-ended like that. Everyone, like the course changes every semester because everyone has different interests. Mm -hmm. And so what you get to learn is really interesting. And like, and because it's a conversation class, you also learn the vocabulary associated and like how to talk about it. And both of those things are super valuable, especially if you want to like increase the complexity of your language skills um, especially when it relates to causes that you care about. And I definitely thought our class was like, I think we had a really good vibe. A lot of us were interested in similar things. And I think that like is what made it a really good course. Um, and so I really, I really recommend it for anyone who's like in French or like wants to take it. Um, it's also low stress because it's like a two credit course. And so there isn't a ton of work associated other than like making your presentations and like reading other people's, um, like sometimes they'll send a news article about like whatever it is they're going to be talking about as well. Did you start French in high school? Was that how you kind of got into that language? Um, I started in sixth grade, but mm -hmm. I think as we all know, like middle school, like middle school language classes <laughs> are not the rigorous things that um, that a Columbia language class or like a high school language class would be. Mm -hmm. So I took um, so I took AP French in senior year, and then um, I took intermediate two in the fall, um, and then post intermediate two that's like the end of like the basic sequence and so I didn't have space in my schedule for like composition and conversation which is the next like which is the intended like next course before you go into your like um like in, into the big electives or whatever mm -hmm. um but and which is like why I took the conversation course but I'm definitely going to be taking composition and conversation soon just to like strengthen like my grammar and yeah stuff like that is there anything else you wanted to share? Maybe like advice for people who are entering college this coming fall or maybe just like tips and tricks you've learned from online school. <laughs> for people who are like like graduating seniors now or like like seniors in high school now, I feel like a lot of people have kind of gotten back into this like, oh, I'm not doing enough. Like I'm still not like like the pandemic is like almost over. Like I'm like I'm already going to college. Like I haven't done what I necessarily wanted to do or like I haven't come in as accomplished as I necessarily wanted to be. Um, and so I feel like I'm super behind. I think all of us in general, like even like even the first years and just everyone who had to deal with this um, like pause in their education um, has definitely felt this before and like is still feeling this. And I think I would just really want to emphasize that like even in the fall, I will still be struggling socially because we haven't talked to people in like a year and a half. Like that entire process of like meeting people I think in general even in a non-pandemic situation like NSOP or like the new student orientation program like that entire like meeting people and like meeting an orientation group is still difficult and it's like and it was difficult for me on zoom and it'll it, but it's also still difficult in person and also just the amount of awkward that people will be <laughs> feeling is like something that is totally going to be normal and so even though it feels like even though we told like even though we want um college to go back to normal it'll still be like a baby steps kind of process so it would just be like don't stress out about it about making friends because I'm like because it like because it happens gradually yeah for sure for sure like even just when we didn't have this pause like even just going into NSOP and meeting new people it can be intimidating right like because people are coming from all over the world you don't know like who you're going to be friends with you don't know like how easy it is going to be to like talk to people mm -hmm. especially in a very new context so coming off of like coming out of like an online year and then going back into in-person, it is definitely a switch, like an adjustment plus like the usual anxiety yeah. around it. So yeah. So don't feel bad if you, if you think you're going to feel that way. So I'm also considering being pre-med. And so I've taken courses that are like, like I, like I took the, I took the beginning of the chemistry sequence this, um, these past two semesters. And so in that process, um that like obviously limits kind of like all the like all the exploration 
Um, but the purpose of it was to like kind of buy myself time and that like if I do choose to be pre-med, it's a lot nicer to start earlier mm-hmm. um, in that way. So as to like, cause I, cause I'm also thinking about studying abroad and like having that many moving pictures means that I should probably start early. <laughs> um, but having, but like, I think it's really important to just like, to explore what you can um, when you can. And I think obviously the like humanities courses at both Barnard and Columbia are so interesting and so amazing. Um, and so really encouraging people to explore in that way. Like, even if you don't think you'll like a discipline, um, like to go and try it is definitely something I'd I'd recommend. Like I didn't think I would like data science, but here I am. Um, And like to that end, so my first year seminar that I took, um, so the way that Barnard, the Barnard structure works is that you have um, first year writing and first year seminar. And like, as opposed to like university writing um, and like the set of the humanities courses that Columbia students have to take um, in their core, but um, you could like the first year writing courses are like there's a lot of different types of them so you can have a lot of different subjects that you could write about Mm -hmm. and so instead of like limiting oneself to like ones that they think would like to first year writing and seminar courses that they think would be the most useful for like whatever they're studying to like really branch out and put themselves in like uh it might not be the most like useful in their head for like whatever like writing they're thinking about for the future but like being able to like be with really cool professors and talk about really cool things is something I definitely recommend. Like my first year seminar course, um, this is also one of those courses that I like absolutely recommend and that I totally love this semester, but it's called Here There Migrant Narratives. And it's really just about the different um, experiences that migrants have. And I love Professor Ula so much. She literally curated the best curriculum. I like like she put so much thought into the kinds of people that she was bringing, um, like the kinds of things she was bringing in. So like we watched um, a documentary called Mr. Gay Syria about like the experience of um, a Syrian, like a queer Syrian man and um, entering like a, like, like a beauty pageant about it and like what that process for him was like. But then we also watched like Saving Face, which is a rom-com by Alice Wu um, that also like speaks about like, queerness and like Asian um and like Asians in America and then it was like and she just had like such good content and so I think if I hadn't taken this class I probably wouldn't have even further considered like taking more English classes about this type of thing than I would have yeah I think that's a really great point I think like even if you if even if you're going into class you don't see the direct relatability to what you're doing it still will be relevant to your life whether that be in your future career not even in like the career aspect of your life but just like you were saying with like the personal and with the interpersonal too your interactions with people like if you take more classes about different identities I feel like that makes you more understanding of different perspectives which I think is just like a good way to go about your life so Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I think that's a really good note to end off on is there anything else you wanted to add or is that I think we I think we covered like most aspects of my college experience (laughs) yeah Um, and thank you so much for sharing about that and thank you to our viewers too for watching and if you're watching this on YouTube as a video podcast then make sure to give this a huge thumbs up and subscribe and if you're listening to this on any other podcast streaming platform then make sure to give it a like and follow as well and thank you again and we will see you in the next episode Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it was really lovely to be able to speak to you today. Bye, everyone.